So you're in the 30s and you're in a panic because you have not considered retirement and you haven't even started saving in this episode of the Wealth Nation podcast. I'm going to show you how you can start prioritizing retirement savings when you're in your 30s. Welcome to the Wealth Nation podcast, a podcast for every mother, daughter, grandmother, sister and wife and the men who are smart enough to tune in. The Wealth Nation podcast brings you all you need to know about investments, business, property investments, personal finance, and all around financial wellness. Here is your host, Yolanda Rose. Thanks for joining me on another episode of the Wealth Nation podcast. I am Yolanda Rose, wealth advisor and financial advisor, and I help individuals like you manage your money well and build generational wealth. And we're in the second part of our series on retirement planning. And today we're looking at a retirement in your 30s or planning for retirement in your 30s, what you should be doing and what shouldn't you be doing. The Wealth Nation podcast is sponsored by Audible. Audible is a seller and producer of spoken audio entertainment, information and educational programming on the internet. Audible sells digital audiobooks, radio and TV programs, and audio versions of magazines and newspapers. For a 30-day free trial of Audible, go to www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com forward slash Audible. So today we're talking about retirement in your 30s and in your 40s. And uh, our series started last week where we spoke about retirement in your 20s. So if you haven't listened to that, or if you have folks in your 20s that need to hear that information, please share that podcast with them. And today we'll crack on with uh, retirement savings in your 30s and in your 40s. Now, the key thing about your 30s is you have about 30 years, or if in your 40s, you have about 20 years before you retire. So if you're in your early 40s and below, okay, you have some time in the market. And one thing that you should be considering at this point is ramping up your retirement annuity contributions as opposed to your pension contributions. So what happens at work is your pension fund is controlled by a group of trustees and your trustees basically decide where those funds are allocated in terms of investments. Whereas as, as opposed to your, your own personal retirement annuity, you have full control of how and where those funds are invested. So if you have an RA, if you have extra funds to put in, or if you have that option to contribute higher towards pension, rather put those funds into your retirement fund because you can you can allocate more of those funds to an equity market. Equity meaning shares. Now, the key thing about an equity market is that uh, you can make a lot of money in uh, in a great amount of time, and it's a very volatile market. You can, uh, as much as you can make money, you can also lose it just as as fast. Okay, so equities is is basically your money making sector of your asset allocation. And when you're young, you have time in the market and the ability to stomach the, the volatilities that is characteristic of an equities market. So if you do have that option to contribute at work, rather make those contributions uh, in your retirement annuity, you have the same tax treatment uh, in a retirement annuity and a pension, but you have far more control as to what you invest in in terms of your own personal retirement annuity. And obviously, if you're in your mid to late 40s, you want to uh, shy away from uh, equities. You want to slowly start transitioning more of your funds into something a little bit more secure. Obviously, you know, your equity uh, portion of your portfolio is the money-making portion. But... As you as you age, uh, the closer you get towards retirement, you are you don't want to take that big risk. So you are slowly moving away. You are going to have a small portion of it in equities, and then you slowly slowly going to move away to other asset um, options like property, uh, cash, possibly commodities as well. All right. The second thing that we're going to note when we're in our thirties or in our forties is that we don't want to fall into the debt trap. Uh, one, we're starting to have kids. Uh, and as you know, if you have kids, they're not cheap at all. You have to start planning for their education if you're in your 30s. Most likely by your late 40s, depending on when you have them, they they got 18 years and then they're in university. All right, and we're going to start planning for that early. Or if you're like me, at uh, one point in time, I'm going to have three kids in university for a period of two or three years. And I've got to factor in all of those costs. Remember that in South Africa, education inflation is at around 8%, meaning that every five years or so, the cost of education increases by 50%. 
that is a huge amount of money and we may be thinking okay it's going to cost me 50 grand a year when my kid starts university but by the time depending on how old your children are by the time they reach university that that 50,000 is a very un, unrealistic figure so when planning for education plan for that 8% a year education inflation and when you're stuck in debt and especially high consumer debt um, you're not going to have those funds to put t- towards education, to put towards retirement savings. You're going to be making the banks rich and paying insane amounts of interest. So don't fall into the trap. And that being said, okay, not all debt is bad. Example, uh, property. Now, if your property is not really generating an income, it's not exactly an asset. It's more of a liability. But uh, eventually, uh, on a 20-year bond period, that asset is going to be yours, and it's a tool that you can leverage during your retirement years. Because if that a- a- asset, your property, has been uh, appreciating over time, at a time when you can easily sell that property. Hopefully, the property market is in a good state. Again, no guarantees here. But it's a tool you can leverage, you can sell, you can downsize, and you'll have a sizable chunk to supplement your retirement. So avoid high consumer debt. Investing in property is always a good option at this point. I think one of the the major things that you want to look at, especially in your 30s and 40s, is protecting your ability to earn an income. How, How that happens is if you're sick, for whatever reason, you can't go to work and earn your income, you need protection for that, okay? And the product that we have, or the solution that we have at this point is income protection policy. So how this basically works is if you are for any reason sick, you break your hand, you fracture something, you in isolation due to COVID or whatever the case is, you lose your ability to earn an income. And once that happens, there's no income coming to the home. So how are you going to save for retirement and save for your kids' education? That's not going to happen. So often we overlook that opportunity of earning an income. A lot of people don't have that privilege um, due to sickness and illness and disease to earn themselves an income, and you need to protect that. Okay, so reach out if you want to know more of income protection. And the key thing to look for at this point is your waiting period. You want the lowest waiting period possible, and income protection in South Africa is very, very far from equal. There's only one company in the country that's providing you with a seven-day waiting period, and you want that uh, because if you're sick for 10 days, at least get paid for three days. If you exhaust your uh, sick leave, what are you going to do? And it's a, it's a very essential product to have in your insurance arsenal. All right, so those are my tips, especially the asset allocation, but that's the highlight for today when it comes to planning in your your retirement planning in your 30s and your 40s. All right, if you do have a retirement annuity, uh, you got to review that regularly to understand how much of your portfolio is in equities. You want, when you're younger, you want more of that into equities. And as you age, you want to transition out. You're going to have a portion in equities, but you're going to transition uh, more of your funds towards more safer, uh, less riskier uh, asset classes. All right, so that's it for me on this episode of the Wealth Nation podcast. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel on Thursday. We're looking at part two of that ultimate retirement strategy. All right, so I'll chat to you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to visit our website at www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com and sign up for our free investment masterclass.